Ever since I was little, me and my family always took trips upstate New York to the Catskills. We had this old beat up trailer up there, it was probably around 50 years old at the time. It had a kitchen, a bathroom, a living room, and two bedrooms. Back when all six of us, me, my two brothers, my parents, and my dog Chester went up there, me and my little brother Joey would have to sleep in the living room on the couches, as there were only two beds. One queen size bed for my parents, and one single bed for my older brother Tom. Sleeping in the living room was the one part me and Joe hated about going up there, in the middle of nowhere with only an old wooden door protecting us from whatever psychopath wanted to break in and kill us. Well, I was only 10 and Joey was only 5, so we had active imaginations. And it's a little understandable for little kids to be scared in situations like these. But the worst part of this living room at night were the blinds. You would think blinds would make you feel safer blocking out the blackness from outside, but these blinds didn't even cover half the window. We were exposed to the blackness of the outside. The thoughts of somebody or something standing out there watching me sleep always haunted my mind. I always slept facing away from the window. Chester always slept in the living room with me and Joey, which made us feel a little safer. Every night, however, at around the same time, we would wake up to the sound of Chester looking out the window, growling. I was always too afraid to go check outside, so I would call my dad and tell him to go look. He would always step outside and take a look to make us feel better, and then he would come back in and tell us it was probably just a deer. There came a time where my dad grew sick of this routine every night, and told us to ignore it and go back to sleep. As the years passed, my mother grew tired of going up there, Chester passed away, and my older brother was always too busy with his new job. He never really enjoyed it as much as me, Joey, and my dad did anyway. This was the first year that it was just the three of us going up there. It kind of saddened me knowing that someday soon, my dad would have to sell this place. I knew we couldn't afford to keep paying the taxes for a place that we only visited once a year. For all I knew, this was the last time we would be going up there. It was a long four hour drive from our Long Island house to the Catskill Mountains. I didn't sleep much during the ride this time. I just watched as the buildings surrounding the highways turned from houses to trees, and then eventually to hills and mountains. It was around 5 o'clock when we arrived to the old sign that advertised a horseback riding business. That's how we always knew that we were there. Just a few more turns. We passed by just about the only neighboring house for about a mile. I don't even know if I would call this a house, it was more of a trailer type home itself. It was relatively close to our trailer, just a few turns away. We never saw who lived there, we never saw any sign of life there. It was strange though, every time we drove by it, the grass seemed freshly cut. We never really thought about it too much, and usually just shrugged it off with some logical explanations. We arrived at the trailer, and stepping out of the car, I immediately picked up on that great country air smell. For the rest of the day, we just relaxed and watched some TV with a very limited selection of channels. Once it gets dark up there, there's nothing you can do outside it. It gets creepy up there at night. Even my dad admitted that once which kind of creeped me out because he was never one to admit fear to us. Once we got hungry, my dad decided to go get a pizza for dinner. My little brother always had a sweet tooth, and he knew that if he went with my dad, he would convince him to buy him candies and a soda. I have been alone in the trailer many times, but that was during the day. I didn't mind that, but the sky was already getting dark, and I knew that it was a fairly long drive to the pizza place. They wouldn't be back until there was full darkness. I didn't want to show my dad that I was afraid though, so I stayed, asking them to bring extra oregano. I heard the Honda start and moved from the grass to the gravel road before driving off. I was watching TV in the living room. It was dark enough where I had to turn on the lights at this point. It was getting darker faster than I had hoped. I then realized that with the lights on and the curtains open, I was in full view for any psycho killer outside. I knew shutting these shitty blinds would be pointless, as they wouldn't even cover me. 
I was scared shitless. I don't know why. I tried to calm myself down, telling myself that there's no one out there, and that nobody is sick enough to be watching me through the window. I started to calm down, as one of my favorite TV shows started on one of the TV channels. After a little while, I became completely relaxed, until... I felt like my heart skipped three beats after hearing the sickening sound. My head immediately spun to the window, but I could see nothing but darkness. I was frozen in fear, my heart now racing. I didn't know what to do. There was no way I would check who was out there. I then remembered my grandpa kept a gun in the closet. I shut up and ran to the closet where my grandpa keeps all of his tools. I dug through a bunch of old boxes and tools, but found no gun. I did, however, find the next best thing, an axe. I grabbed the axe and ran back to the couch. I thought about turning off the TV and light, but I quivered at the thought of being in total darkness in this situation. Whatever is out there knows I'm in here, and turning out the lights would do no good. I sat back down on the couch with the axe in my hand, hoping whoever was out there would see that I was armed. As I sat there waiting, a few minutes felt like hours. I waited for another knock on the glass, or footsteps coming up the wooden steps to the porch, or for the doorknob to turn, but there was nothing. Nothing but the sounds of the TV and crickets outside. I heard the sound of a car pulling up the gravel road and turning onto our property. They're finally back. I was so urgent to tell my dad about the knocking, but then I realized that he already thought I was kind of paranoid. I put the axe back in the closet and sat back down on the couch. I heard the sound of a car door shut, and then another, and then another. I guess they put the pizza in the back seat. The front door opened, and my dad and brother walked in with a pizza. I was instantly relieved, remembering how hungry I was. After eating, we watched TV for an hour before calling it a night. Since it was just three of us this time, my dad and brother shared the queen-sized bed, while I got the single bed in the other bedroom. This bedroom has a window as well, with no blinds at all. This window faced the woods behind the trailer. At least it's better than being in the living room, I thought. Surprisingly, I fell asleep relatively quickly, only to wake up hours later to the sound of... I sprang up from my pillow, instantly reminded of a nightmarish situation. No. They knew I was in this room now. Who's out there? Are they watching me? Why? All these thoughts filled my mind, almost causing me to forget the most natural and expected reaction from almost anyone. I screamed for my dad, and I immediately heard him run out of his bedroom and into mine. He turned the light on, asking me if I had gone completely insane. I explained the thumping noise on the glass to my dad, and he reluctantly agrees to humor my story. He stepped outside with a flashlight and searched around the whole trailer. He returned inside about a minute later, assuring me that there was nobody out there. My dad already thought that I was paranoid, but after this, I'm sure he thought I was just flat out crazy. I didn't even try to fall back asleep that night. The thought that somebody was just outside these thin, old trailer walls, and that they've been staring right at me, freaked me out. All that was stopping them from entering the trailer was an old wooden door. The worst part, my dad didn't believe me. Without a dog around anymore to warn us, this creep could sneak in and slit our throats before a single one of us woke up. These thoughts polluted my mind, so I knew I would have to stay awake and listen for that front door to open. I probably wouldn't have even fallen asleep again that night if I tried. A few slow hours passed before the first crack of sunlight filled the room. After hours of sitting still in fear, listening, the sunlight brought me instant relief. I heard my dad get out of bed, walk past my room, and step outside. We have a beautiful mountain view of the sunrise up there, so my dad would often get up early to watch the sunrise. Knowing that my dad was awake now, I felt safe, safe enough to fall asleep for an hour or two. 
and as quickly as that, I fell asleep. It wasn't until a few hours later when I woke up to the sound of my little brother riding his dirt bike around the property. It must have been noon already. I was surprised my dad didn't wake me up. When I entered the kitchen, my dad greeted me with a good afternoon, emphasis on the afternoon. I decided to eat breakfast outside on the deck, because above the kitchen table was one of those sticky fly-catching roll-up tapes that you hang on the ceiling, and quite frankly, a bunch of dead flies and other flying bugs are not what I want to look at while eating. It was a long, boring day. I didn't do much besides watch TV, shoot cans with a BB gun, and think about the night before. Somebody knocked on the window. Somebody was outside, watching, listening. Maybe they still were. It was about ten minutes after dinner time. The sounds of the dirt bike still filled the property, even so shortly after dinner. My dad couldn't take the racket anymore and told him to go ride somewhere else. It was a good thing my mom wasn't there for my dad's sake because she wouldn't approve of a boy of such a young age riding a dirt bike without supervision, especially so close to dark. My little brother told my dad that he was going to ride on the neighbor's property. After all, nobody ever seemed to be there, and it was a perfect property for the dirt bike. My dad said it was okay, and with that, my little brother stormed off the property, turning the corner up the hill until the sound was completely gone. It was quiet again, just what my dad wanted. I became bored quickly and decided to go see if Joey would let me ride around for a bit. I walked over to the neighboring lawn, but couldn't find my brother there. It was strange because he said he was going to ride around the property. I assumed that he was just riding down the dirt roads and decided to walk back to the trailer until I noticed the front door to the little house at the top of the lawn was open. This made me really curious because... There was no car on the lawn, and I had never seen anyone in that house. I then had the thought that my little brother went in there, snooping around. I was extremely curious at this point, so I walked up to the house. As I got closer, I noticed my little brother's dirt bike on the side of the house. Now I knew he was in there. This got me angry. I stormed up to the house and barged in through the front door. I screamed Joey's name, but there was no response. The only thing that broke the silence was the creaking of the deteriorating floor when I walked. The living room was small and it only had a few pieces of furniture, including a blue couch with some tears in the arms, a seemingly antique wooden coffee table that was covered in dust, and an old TV that looked like it was from the 60s. The room was dark as all the curtains were closed. It just had an overall eerie feeling to it. I screamed Joey's name again. Still silence. I walked into the kitchen which was in even worse shape. There were black marks on the floor in the corner, where there was probably at one point a fridge. There was an old microwave laying in the another corner of the room. I wanted to take a few pictures inside this creepy house, so I took out my phone. It was off. I pressed the power button on and the Apple logo popped up. While looking at the ground, I noticed something a bit unsettling. There was a trail of blood drop stains leading from the kitchen sink to somewhere outside of the kitchen. I placed my phone on the counter and followed the trail out of the kitchen through a small hallway and to a door. It was a small door. It looked like a closet door. I was a little afraid to open it, but I did anyway. I made a shocking discovery. It was a stairway leading to a basement. It was odd for a, a small trailer-like house like this to have a basement. I had the stupid thought that maybe Joe was down there, but I'm sure my curiosity only used that as an excuse to keep snooping around. I searched the wall for a light switch, but there was none. I walked down a few steps to see if I could see anything, but it was too dark. It was too dark to go down there without a light source. I decided to go get my phone to use as a flashlight, so I walked back up the stairs until something hit me in the face. I realized I walked into a hanging light switch. How could I have missed that? I thought. 
I pulled down the switch, turning on a very dimly lit light bulb. Not only was it dim, but it gave off an eerie red light. I took a few steps down the stairs. The light barely provided enough light to reveal the basement, but as I peered down, I was able to see the shadows of a bunch of objects that seemed to be attached to something hanging off the ceiling. Before I could get a closer look, I heard footsteps coming from upstairs. It had to be Joey. I was so focused on snooping around myself, I had completely forgotten that the reason I entered in the first place was to find him. I walked up the stairs, yelling Joe's name again. Why aren't you answering? I said as I reached the top of the stairs. As I stepped back into the dark hall, I saw to the right of me, about ten feet away, the silhouette of a large figure. That was not Joe. I made a mad dash for the front door, noticing another blood trail leading to the front door. I ran outside. I was so horrified, I almost didn't even notice my dad's car speeding down the road at the bottom of the lawn. Where the hell was he going? There was someone in the car with him. Was it Joey? It had to be. He was leaving. Where the hell was he going? I ran even faster to try and catch his attention, but I was too late. The car turned the next corner and drove down the hill past the trees. I slowed down and turned around to see that Joey's dirt bike was still at the side of the house. What the hell? I had no choice but to run back to the trailer. As I ran, I constantly turned around to make sure that whoever was in that house wasn't following me. It was getting pretty dark now and it was kind of hard to see from a distance. Running onto our property, Though surrounded by woods, I became extremely paranoid that there were people hiding behind the trees watching me. My dad left the front door wide open. He was obviously in a frantic rush, but for what? I ran inside, shut the door, and locked it, still breathing frantically. My heart was pounding from fear, not because of the fact that I had just run all the way to the trailer. I had to call my dad and ask him where the hell he was going. I reached into my pocket for my phone, only to give me the sickening reminder that I had left my phone in that house. Stupid! Why did I put it on the counter instead of in my pocket? All I could do now was wait. It was getting really dark outside now, to the point that I would have to turn on the lights to see anything. I dreaded this because as soon as I would turn on the lights, I would be on display to the outside for anyone to see but there was no way that I would be able to fall asleep now. I was still in shock, that figure I saw. It had to be the owner of that house. I didn't know someone lived there. The condition of that house, though, how could anybody live in there? And that figure, it towered over me. It had to be seven feet tall. Why the hell was Joe's dirt bike at that house? He had to, He had to have gone in there, but... Surely he came out. Who else could have been in that car with my dad? I wasn't being a bad person. I knew I wasn't. My brother was safe and sound with my dad, and I I knew that. I would have heard him if he were still in that house. I sat in the darkness for a while, just waiting to hear my dad's car pull off the gravelly road and onto the grass. I didn't turn on the lights because I didn't want anyone to know that I was in there. Before it got too dark to navigate the trailer at all, I managed to find a flashlight in the closet. I sat on the living room couch for about another 20 minutes, my eyes resting but my thoughts racing. However, a few moments later, my thoughts were interrupted by a sound. A sound that I had been anticipating. It was the sound of a car driving off the gravelly road and onto the property. I had instantly felt better. My dad was back. I reached over for the lamp and flipped on the switch. I heard the sound of a car door shut, and then another, and then another. What the hell? Was someone else with them? No. Maybe they just put some groceries in the back seat. I relax until I hear two adult male voices talking outside. 
I turn off the light immediately and duck under the window. The talking stopped. I waited for a few seconds before sneaking a peek at the car that was parked. I could just barely make out in the dark that it was a white van. I felt like my heart sank into my stomach. I ran to my dad's bedroom and closed the door. I had to find a place to hide. Under the bed would be too obvious, and the closet would also be too obvious. But then I remembered that inside the closet was another little door that opened up to a small compartment with a water pump inside. I didn't know if I could fit in there, but I had no other options. I had to try. I stepped in the closet and shut the door behind me. I turned on my flashlight and looked around for the small door. I couldn't find it. I could hear footsteps coming up the deck outside, approaching the front door to the trailer. After desperately rummaging the closet, I found the door to the compartment, but it was way too small for me to fit into. It was stupid of me to even consider that. I heard somebody trying to turn the doorknob to the front door. Their failed attempts to open the door led to the sound of a loud bang on the door. They were trying to kick down the door now. It only took one more loud bang to the door before I heard it break down. I had to get the hell out of there. Surely they saw the light that was on not too long ago, so I'm sure that they knew that I was in there. Suddenly, I had a nightmarish thought that the person I saw in that house was one of the intruders. Everything was becoming seemingly clear to me now. The person I saw in that house must have been the one knocking on the windows at night, watching me. He must have gotten my little brother. Oh, Joey. He's probably still in that house, I thought. God only knows what happened to him. And those things hanging in that basement, I don't even want to try to imagine what they are. How could I have left that house to save myself before even thinking about my little brother? I heard two pairs of heavy footsteps pressing into the weak floors of the trailer. One pair of footsteps was coming down the hall toward the bedroom. I felt like my heart stopped beating at this point. I was sure that I was going to die. As the footsteps reached the bedroom door, I started to imagine the slowest, most painful deaths that I would endure. The door to the bedroom opened, and the footsteps entered the room. I was prepared to launch out an attack as soon as the closet doors opened. I may have only been 17 at the time, but I was no scrawny thing. I could put up a decent fight. The footsteps circled the room. I could hear the sound of the intruder pushing things around under the bed. If I had hidden under there, I would have been as good as dead. I heard the intruder get back on his feet and come towards the closet. The footsteps came directly to the outside of the doors before stopping. I was as scared as anyone could be, but I was ready to attack. The silence was broken by a man from outside, screaming for the two intruders to come outside. I heard footsteps walk out of the room, back down the hall, and out of the trailer. This was my chance to sneak out. I opened the closet door quietly, and tiptoed down the hall into the living room. I slipped on my shoes and looked out the window to make sure the coast was clear. Just barely, I could make out what looked like two bodies standing in front of the white van. Only two. Where was the third one? I turned to the door, but I could see something in the kitchen. It was the silhouette of a huge figure. The same figure I saw in the house. I don't know why or what possessed me, but... Instead of running out of that trailer instantly like anyone should have, I flipped on the light switch to the kitchen. What I saw will forever haunt my memories. There, a deformed man. I don't even know if I would call this a man. It was a giant, seven-foot creature that was slightly slouched with arms that almost reached down to its knees. Its hands were deformed with the few fingers it had seeming to be facing the wrong way. One of its legs was noticeably bigger than the other, and its face... Oh, its face... It had a face of a human, but it seemed to have been sewn onto this thing. The stains of blood covered the facial features of the face that clearly used to belong to somebody else. I stood there, staring at that thing for probably a few seconds before sprinting out of that trailer. I ran past the tree line into the woods, barely able to navigate in the darkness. 
I remember hearing the two men shouting to me, but I didn't pay attention. After what I had just experienced and seen, my only focus was to get as far away from there as possible. I cut through the woods to make it back to the road. After running down the road for about a mile, I had to stop to catch my breath. I was sure I wasn't being followed. The thought of my little brother came up again. I was convinced he was dead, and I wanted to kill myself for being such a coward and not trying to find him when I could. Instead, I had been worried about myself and getting myself to safety, and just shrugged it off with some stupid excuse. And whoever was in that car with my dad, I'm sure they were planning on killing him. And my dad simply wanted to save me and Joe. I felt like crying, but I was too scared to cry. I was too focused on being scared and checking my surroundings to make sure I wasn't being followed. I stood in the middle of the road, in the darkness of the night, surrounded by nothing but woods on both sides. The closest neighboring house had to be close. I could go there and ask for help, and call the police. Just before I could continue walking, a beam of light shone down the road. I looked up to see the headlights of a car speeding down the road. It couldn't be the white van, it was coming from the opposite direction. I waved my hand, signaling for the car to stop, but as it came closer, I realized it was my dad. He slammed on the brakes and screamed at me to get in the car. There was someone in the passenger seat. It was my little brother Joey. I felt a brief moment of utter happiness and relief, but as I walked closer, I made a horrific discovery. His arm had several gashes in it, of which my dad tried to patch up with first aid tape. The tape had been soaked and turned completely red from blood. My little brother seemed to have been passed out. I almost let out a scream of shock, but but I got in the back seat of the car and we drove off to never return to that trailer again. My dad explained to me that my brother had returned to the trailer with his arm in a bloody mess, seemingly in shock. My dad immediately tried to patch him up the best he could before speeding away to the nearest hospital, which was miles away. He didn't have time to find me and tell me where he was going. He figured that Joey somehow injured himself on the dirt bike by falling off. Joey was in shock to the point where he wouldn't even speak. It wasn't until about 20 minutes into the drive that Joey finally started talking, and he explained what happened to him. The door to the house was open, and Joe decided to go snooping around inside. After opening the basement door, a man ran up with a knife and started slicing at Joe's arm. Joe somehow escaped and ran back to the trailer. By the next day, Joe was safe and sound in the hospital, recovering. My dad reported what happened to the police, and they sent a squad up to the house, which was reported completely empty. Those creeps packed up and left in a hurry. It's really sickening to know that they're still out there somewhere, continuing to do what they do. And that creature with them, that I'm probably the only one who will ever have seen that thing and lived to remember it, whatever it was. Well, that was about four years ago. My dad sold the property and we all tried to forget about what happened. At the end of the day, Joey was in the car after all, just like I thought. So, I didn't do anything wrong after all. I would have been dead if I hadn't trusted my gut. So, I'm not a bad person. Right? <laughs>